speaking of Impact, it's your one-stop shop for all things Impact Wrestling News. I am your host, as always, Chad Porter. Joining me is the Pew Pew East of Pew Pew co-host, Zachary Tyler Pew Pew Duncan. Zachary, how are you? Pew 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 Pew. See, it's not just a dumb gimmick. It's literally what he says. He's Pew 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 Mon. <laughs> and, 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 and if you don't know if I'm referring to Pokemon or Digimon, yes. <laughs> Were you a Digimon kid? No, I was a Pokemon kid. Literally don't know anyone who was a Digimon kid. Like, at all. Uh, my future wife watched Digimon as well as Pokemon. Well, no, so. like, that's fine. That's normal. Uh, Digimon yeah. was supposed to cross, not crossover, but like, it was supposed to intersect the Pokemon crowd. But, like, I don't know mm-hmm. anyone who's like, no. I'm about Metal Greymon. Fuck that Pikachu noise. I, I've never <laughs> met one. Never met one. I will say no, this. The yet. Digimon movie so much better looking than the Pokemon movie. Have you ever seen the Digimon movie? I've not seen it. I've, I mean, I've, I'm sure I've seen clips of it. And from what comes to mind, then I would agree. <laughs> There's a uh, dr- uh, Team Four Star abridged. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, of course there is. It's like nine minutes long. <laughs> uh, but there's a uh, like the the climax of the movie has like the because like it's all in cyberspace because like obviously it's fucking semi no no it's samurai super cyber squad or whatever the fuck it was called but with monsters it's, mm-hmm. it's dumb but like there's like this giant um it's like a giant virus and it starts to like replicate so like they send two other Digimon in to face it like it's one's like the uh, it's like a tiger wolf thing, and the other one's like a T Rex thing. I think that's Greymon, and then they like they merge into one thing, and they're getting their ass kicked. And then like both of the like the the, the Digimon's boy handlers go into cyberspace somehow I, because reasons, and they're like, "Yo, we love you." And then the Digimon's like, "Oh, we gonna wreck some shit now, boys." And like the song that starts playing as the Digimon starts wiping out this virus is so banger. Like, I love it. It's so good. Uh, oh, and at some point, like, a nuke gets launched at Japan. I don't know. <laughs> it's fucking weird, man. The abridge is great because they make the uh, main character with the goggles into, like, some deviant pervert. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, his sister's one of the other, like, Digimon handlers or whatever. And, like, the abridge uh, series opens up with him calling her in the next room, like, hey, sis, it's your brother. And she's like, you know the law. You have to stay 90 feet from me. <laughs> 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 it's it's so terrible, but so good. Um, speaking of terrible, but good. Final resolution. Marcus and I talked about it on the underground last night, uh, but we haven't got Zach's opinion. That's what we're going to go through these beat by beat. If you want to know me and Marcus's opinion, you can go and listen to last night's Wrestling Underground on YouTube.com backslash Wrestling Underground. By the by, program reminder update. We finally did it. We changed the names. Of the other streaming Ooh. outlet. <laughs> it's, it's no longer <laughs> twitch.tv backslash comic and game core because that was a dumb decision on my part. <laughs> uh, we have reverted back to twitch.tv backslash real nerd corp uh, and the YouTube channel. When we finally have enough subscribers, we'll go to youtube.com backslash real nerd corp. So we're, we're, huh? we're simplifying things. So it kind of makes sense. So, uh huh. Uh-huh. Simplifying is good. But this channel that we're on was the original Nerd Corp Twitch channel. Then it became the wrestling channel. But then we created the... So like, there, it's kind of like the Baltimore Ravens technically being the franchise that Cleveland left uh, that, that left Cleveland and then become Baltimore. But then we got the history and the team uh, logo when we came back in 99. So that's kind of how this is going. <laughs> Um, so, all right, Tommy Dreamer, Larry D, if Larry D loses, he goes to jail for shooting Johnny Bravo. This is so Mountie, big boss, big boss man, circa like 1989, 1990, all over again. Uh, Uh so Dreamer beats Larry D. Dreamer is still as good as he ever was, which either says he was never very good or he was amazing the entire time. You pick the narrative. (laughs) But he beats Larry D, and Larry D and AC Romo, Romero start screaming in the ring afterwards, like holding each other. Oh, it was adorable. 
<laughs> All right. Thoughts on the hardcore, sorry, uh, old school rules match. So such a stupid name. Um, the match was fine. As you said, Dreamer, Dreamer was at his most Dreamer. And, and you know, Larry, Larry D's not a bad hand himself. In fact, he says he has the best one in the house. Um, the match was fine. To me, it feels like an odd choice for an opener. Because, I mean, w- without the the stipulation, quote-unquote, then I would say okay. But with the whole, if Larry D. loses, he goes to jail for attempted murder. <laughs> For shooting someone, I feel like that's not the match you want to have on first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know, you want to kind of let people. You, I mean, typically they would do like a just non-title, just thrown in X division match to start with, just to you know get people in, get people sell. Be like, okay, this is this looks like it could be a good show. Let's see what else. Let's let's watch the rest of it. I don't disagree. So, and. Yeah, interesting choice to have that on first. I think if you wanted to take, you know, let's just assume that you're kind of shoehorned in with the roster you got. Yeah. I think the best way to do is you drop Alicia and Tennille from the tag team match, give them 15 minutes because Caleb can go, and do Caleb and Eddie to open the show. Mm -hmm. I think that's the better way to do it. Um, But when you look at the card, like top to bottom, for an opener, there's two matches that you could have done with Maddox and Rohit and Rich Swan yeah. Bay. But Rohit, while he's an X division guy, isn't a typical X division wrestler. He's very much yeah. between the ropes and you're not putting the world title on first. So no. they're kind of in a situation where, uh, you know, they went with Larry D and dreamer because you know, who else were you going to have open up? And, you know, dreamers not doing any two base tip to Arizona Tempe suicide dives. But he's he's doing pretty good stuff with the stuff he does. Like, there you go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's fine. It's acceptable. Whatever. Although, I will point out that Carl Anderson and Ethan Page could have been an opener as well. Although, not nearly as fast-paced. You know, it was pretty pointless. <clears throat> uh, Havoc and Nevea, or Nevea, uh, took on the Sea Stars. I don't know if they have a third sister, but I would love to know what her name is because I love the name of Ashley Vox and Delmi Exo. Like, who who else do you have? Kalpari Oxo? Like, why? Like, I want more siblings. Give me more sibling names, please. <laughs> I want to know what Ashley Vox and Delmi Exo's sisters would be named all the way down to, like, the 48th percentile. <laughs> like, just keep coming up with names. Ch- Chuck-, Chuck Taylor style. Uh, thoughts on the sisters versus Havoc and Nevia? Uh, not a whole lot of thoughts on this. The match was decent. It was, you know, it was nothing spectacular, but nothing terrible either. Uh, fair enough. Tenille, Tenile, Tenizzle Dashwood taking on Caleb with a k- 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 with a with a v v v. They defeated Alicia Edwards and Eddie Edwards after Sammy Callahan did some shenaniganry and made Eddie go, wait, which way did he go, George? Which way did he go? And then they lost. Yeah. A- any thoughts? Um, a decent match. Uh, I I enjoy Caleb Conley, or Caleb with a K in the ring. He's fantastic. Uh, pure gold when Eddie went to punch to deal and Caleb dove in the way. <laughs> And just face plan. <laughs> Beautiful. Loved everything about it. <laughs> uh, I love how hard he biffed. <laughs> it was so good. And I love that, like, they they could have very easily, and it would not have gone amiss in today's wrestling, you know, had Caleb put on a competitive matchup against Eddie. But no, they they went full in. They went full into the gimmick. He's not a typical wrestler. He's mostly a photographer, and thus he's gonna get his ass kicked most of the time by Eddie. So I I dug it. They've had three trios in the last five years that have bailed on them. 
You had Kingston and mm-hmm. LAX, although technically it was Kingston and uh, uh, Santana and uh, Ortiz were, were barely a trio. Obama still counted. They had the Rascals, and then they had Andrew Everett, Trevor Lee, and Caleb Conley. Of those nine names, Caleb Conley is the only remainder. Somewhere someone did their math wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he should not be the only remainder. We should at least still have Ham- uh, an homicide, uh, Kingston as well. Man, that OG's LAX feed was dope. At least we got Hernandez back. Yeah, that's cool. Bring back Homicide, goddammit. And I don't mean the wrestler. I mean I mean them running over a kid. Bring bring back trying to kill kids. That's awesome. Remember that? Am I the only one that remembers that uh, Hernandez and Homicide and, and uh, Kingston ran down like a nine-year-old? <laughs> Did they? You don't remember that they they ran down like S- Santana's nephew or some dumb bullshit like I, that. Oh, Google! I it. do not remember that at all. Oh, go- you'll laugh so hard. I guess his name was like Richie. I think. Oh, it's so bad. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Hernandez defeats Falaba in a match where Fala won. He would or, or Hernandez won. He get the money back, allegedly. Um, but he, he didn't get the money back and said, uh, Kira Hogan and Tasha Steele stole it. Those delinquents did a steal. Except this time they misplaced it. Yes. As now, we will get to in the, in the impact review. Now, now, now it's gone. It's missing. So long. Farewell. Evitas and goodbye. I don't know what that song is, but I, I remember that for some reason. Uh, Hernandez foul ball wasn't very good. Uh, it was probably the worst match on the card. Yes. Agreed. That's what happens when you put two immobile guys against each other. And then they made yeah. it three minutes too long. They did. They really did. Eric Young with Joe Doring. When are we going to get to see Joe Doring murder somebody on screen, please? That's all I want for Christmas. Joe Doring took on and defeated Rhino. Rickety, 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 wrecked Rhino. Loved it. Solid match. Not great. Is the love is a strong word. Maybe I said yeah, it in the heat of the I moment. Was weird. <laughs> maybe I said it in the heat of the moment. Maybe I didn't really mean it. Maybe maybe we don't meet your parents this weekend. Um, it, was, it was solid, but I, I, I really want to see Joe Doring versus Rhino in an all Japan style fucking strong style beatdown. Like, come on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Stop teasing me. I've been a good boy. Ask Zach. I didn't try to murder him at least three times when I was in Iowa with him. Sure, twice, yeah. Sure. But that was that was expected. Once in front of a giant car, and then I was looking for a cliff. There wasn't any cliff. You got lucky. Turns out Iowa has a lot of rolling hills. Hills. Yes. Not a lot Turns of out there is no Grand Canyon in which for a twelve-year-old to drive a vintage car off. Of. <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking sense. Why did Star Trek do that? Why did why did those movies do anything? I don't mind the first two. I don't I don't mind them either. Uh, the I I will say as time has gone on the uh, the 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 shine the luster has kind of rubbed off them a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. On the contrary, uh, first contact gets better with age. Damn straight. Uh, if you were any other man, I'd kill you where you stand. All right, calm down, Warv. I asked you if you wanted fucking prune juice. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> I thought you liked it. Yes, he was. He was insulted by the fact that you asked him. Right? He, I should have presumed. I'm sorry, Klingon. God. <laughs> the correct. The the correct answer is. Here is your Klingon, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Commander Worf. I will be back to bring you another in about two minutes. Here is your Klingon. <laughs> Did I say Klingon? Yes. Okay. Do you just serve random Klingon to war? <laughs> is this like a sexual thing? Like, are these concubines or is he a cannibal? I'm pretty sure cannibal Klingons is like super frowned upon in the Empire. I mean, you. Uh, it could be a. It could be a combination of the two. They like to get freaky, from what I hear. Yes, yes, they they do. Although Jadzia was like super freaky because she hooked up with a clown. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of hooking up, Eric Young wins. <laughs> That's the match. That's the match description. 
if we ever transcribe Bam. that, this may, this this is gonna be a real fucking instant transcription. And then Worf <laughs> ate the bitch. Decision. Eric Young defeated Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> Impact titles up next row. He's like, TJP can't challenge my title. I wonder who it's going to be. And we're all screaming, it's manic. We all know it's fucking manic. And then she she does manic. And then I'm like, "Mm." and then like they're doing the, uh, it's not manic. It's totally not manic. And I'm like, fucking, what are you talking about? You can see his fucking tattoos. He's not even wearing sleeves. That lazy cuck. (laughs) (laughs) Almost as Actually, just about as lazy as Jeff Hardy as Willow. Well, at least we knew Jeff Hardy was Willow. Like, I, I mean, Jeff Hardy's like the Willow costume when he was in the woods stalking EC3 and Rockstar Spud. Like that Willow costume, perfect. Uh-huh. But then when he wrestled, it was Jeff Hardy attire with the Willow mask. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but you I put zero uh, effort into that, Jeff. I mean, at least TJP as Manic somewhat changes up her his mannerisms a little bit. Yeah, he does a lot more like no, squats he, he, and like, look at me yeah, bend he's, he's, my knees. He is. Matt look Hardy's, at the flexibility that Matt Hardy never had. I was just about to say Matt Hardy's super envy. It's just sitting going, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and, and everyone's like shaking their head like, no, no, you can't. No. Matt, in 2005, you were locking in locks. You're walking in the locks up. Let's be honest here, bud. <laughs> you didn't lose the edge feud because edge, edge, you know, cheated. You lost the edge feud because you couldn't technically bend your knees as you walked up a ladder. <laughs> and that man has a bad neck. Like, come on, come on, kid. So Manic defeats Roe. He wins the exhibition title, and somewhere I hear Zach going, "No." And that was I the mean, day you, you became Darth Duncan. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, was, it was quite obvious that that's what they were going to end up doing. And, I mean, honestly, actually, uh, the whole time in commentary, Josh was just like, we know that's TG, TJP. Mm-hmm. We know we've seen Manic Unmasked before. He has the same tattoos. This is absolutely TJP, but apparently this is allowed. <laughs> and to be fair, there is some continuity because even Scott Demore is like, listen, TJP can't challenge for that belt. TJP can't wrestle Rohit again. TJP, the name, cannot compete against Rohit. <clears throat> you should dress as Manic. <laughs> I have to go talk to Doc. I, I, Demore like super implied it was it was kosher. Like he, I yeah. think I think Scott Demore trained Sean O'Hare when O'Hare was in WCW because he's he's pretty much become like the devil's advocate now. Hey Eddie, Alicia's not gonna mind if you sleep with someone else. Hey Alicia, <laughs> Eddie's not gonna mind if you sleep with someone else. I'm not telling you what you don't already know. <laughs> How did Sean O'Hare not become a goddamn megastar? I digress. Diana Perazzo defended her title against Rosemary in a, in a solid match. Nothing, nothing crazy to write home about. Um, uh-huh. There's some chicanery at the end, if I remember correctly, due to Kimberly. Yes. Uh, Rosemary hit the red wedding on Diana Perazzo. Kimberly pulled the ref out as he was counting the one, two, three. How dare you? <laughs> And then Diana, I think Diana won with the uh, with the Not her, Gotch her, style. Yeah. yeah, her new finisher, the uh, Venus yeah, the, de Milo. No, that's the that's the double arm part. Um, uh, Cosa Nostra. That's yeah, yeah Cos- Costa Nostra. Hey, well, hey, uh, and, is uh, Diana Prato Italian? <laughs> I mean, can, I would. Can anyone tell me? She's being so big. <laughs> uh, <about it. laughs> well, we 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 may never know. <laughs> well, it only took three licks to the center of, of, of a Tootsie Pop. I wonder how many. Nope. Oh, Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Anderson is reading Ethan Page. Uh, he did. Yeah, I don't know. Like, so here's the thing. 
like logistically, I know where this is going, and it's straight off Ethan Page, just in case he does sign elsewhere because his contract's up. But on the flip side, I don't know if they have enough time to do the story before they, you know, before he's gone, because you know his last taping, whenever that was, I think it was this past, you know, last Wednesday, I think was the last day of the taping. Um, like oh. that was it for him. So like, I don't know how many days that taping covered. So I don't know how many days we have left of Ethan Page on television, and they they're like super going into a weird direction for his final like you know write off. I thought last night we were going to get him going like I quit or or you know you're done or whatever, but the, you know there's still technically meat on this bone so to speak. So like I don't know where this is going. This match was okay. Ethan's a fine wrestler, but his yeah. his money is his mouth. Yes. So, like, you know, it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. You know, we don't need the karate man. He's oh, gosh. Not, not very good. Why? Oh, God. Wrestling fans are stupid. <laughs> I don't I don't know why this is the thing, man. I don't, I don't know. So Carl Anderson wins. Any thoughts? Um, the match was decent. Yeah. As as you said, Ethan Page, Ethan Page is fine. Uh, Carl Anderson is good. Um, was a little puzzled at Carl Anderson basically pulling an Austin Aries after the match and just walked out like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. So, you know, kudos there, I guess, Carl. Well, I mean, granted, I know you're they're, they're making you into a heel, but you don't have to be a dick. We're we're building up to the big old bullet clubness. Bullet club. Yeah. Just a kind of little uh, update. I, I I adjusted your audio down just a titch. Just a just a just a, just a just a smidge. It's just a smadge. Just a titch. Ah, ah, I see how it is. Well, you were redlining on me, Mister Mister Loudmouth. Yeah, so I was like, why why are you redlining? That's not good. We need to be in, in, in the center yellow. Like, that's 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 where we're at. So, like, I don't know why you're fucking so obnoxiously loud. God. Main event time. Swanee, Swanee, Swan versus the Bay, Bay, the Bay, the Bay. World title. Swan defeated Bay. Match went literally a second less than 20 minutes. It was a good match. Uh, as I told Marcus last night, I think these shows work best, especially when you have Swan already in, like, a rivalry these ma- mm-hmm. these matches work best to do. Maybe dream matches aren't the best word to describe them, but that kind of like let's go get you know someone from outside the company to come in, whether it's Kenny Dykstra or Raven or or you go and get uh, Lance Hoyt, although he's under contract, so not Lance Hoyt, or Monty Brown or somebody, and you have them in like a special title challenge against Swan. I think that's where the matches work best because, like, as I told Marcus, like, I, Bay's a mid Carter, if that. I don't know anyone who's like, dude, I can't wait to see what Chris Bay does on Impact. And that's not a knock on Bay. He's been here for eight months. So, you know, you got you to gotta give these guys time to build up their, their name value. And Swan's still building up his name value to be worthy of being in the main event scene, and he's already champion. So, like, you know, we're putting more work on Swan than he needed to have. It's like putting someone who's smart but not that smart into like a super advanced class and then expecting them to catch up instead of having them prove that they're ready for it and then putting them in, into the advanced class. Like, I think that's how these main events should be going. Um, you know, I, I revealed, not revealed, but I talked about before how one of the Impact Pluses had like. Um, Stefan Bonner from the UFC was on the undercard against Moose on like the July Impact Plus event from last year. Um, MVP and Chavo Guerrero were in a title fight for a indie re- regional title, and that was in the mid card. Like that's yeah. the kind of stuff you should have on these cards. But you know, I know with the pandemic, you know, there's obviously some um, issues trying to get that all worked out, and, and I respect it. And I'm not, you know, sitting here trying to chastise them. I just think that. You know, if you're you're building up to fucking hard to kill with, with a six man tag match, why not use Moose here? Like the the selection of Bay just didn't make any sense. It was a good match, but it just didn't make any sense. Like it was just kind of shoehorned. Um, could have done Swan versus Willie Mack. That would made more sense. I don't know. What do you think of the main event? 
Um, I, I, I absolutely agree with everything you said. Um, it, it's uh, w with putting Bay into the main event. Um, it just seems like they are the, the people that they should be using. I would hopefully assume, you know, like a moose or a Sam Callahan or someone along those lines are they're saving for a later date mm -hmm. so but then at that point it becomes it it definitely looks like it's like they're just kind of pulling a name out of, out of the hat and seeing whoever's available that they have working for them um that being said i really enjoyed this match um because it it wasn't the super high paced spectacle that I would have expected it to have been with these two. They kept it. They, I mean, they still did their, their moves and everything, but they kept the pace pretty steady and pretty even throughout. And it, you know, it, if there had been a feud behind this, if there had been like an actual story to build this up to where they could, they could, intertwine some manner of storytelling in there, then I would say this match was fantastic. I mean, just the, the back and forth of like towards the end where they had the back and forth ex exchange of kicks was just looked so good. And I was for most of them. I was just like, how did you not actually kick him in the head? How is he not knocked out right now? Kickity doo da, kickity a. Actually, that's not a good song. I kind of just realized that. That's a bad song. Damn you, Disney, you racist bastards. Gotta stay. One kick, head of the bread line. One <laughs> kick, head of the sword. I kick only what I can afford. And that's everything. Kind of works. I'm gonna have to fine tune it. It kind of does. <laughs> um, kick me, baby, one more time. <clears throat> Classic 1998 mm -hmm. uh, Britney Spears uh, song. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, God damn it! There's too many. There's too many that don't work. <laughs> um, uh, hey, I just met you. This is crazy. Nope, that doesn't work. <laughs> God damn it! There's not enough. Uh, but I agree. Swan and Bay had a, had a kicktastic performance. They were so kicky that even Tony Hawk was impressed. That, mm -hmm. that only makes sense if you realize that, that you kick on a skateboard to propel yourself. Kick, push, yeah. kick, push. Literally, Lupe Fiasco did an entire song about it. Like, come on, I can't explain every fucking pop culture reference to you heathens. Ugh. Anyway. So, we are, uh, we are done with this show. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's uh, let's move on to the Impactorama, Impactoroni, Impact. So we open up with uh, Tenille, Tenille, Tenizzle versus uh, Alicia. Turns out uh, Alicia's got some work to do because uh, Alicia got spotlight kicked into Phase's. And then uh, Sammy Callahan's like, hey, guys, look at me. I'm on the big screen. Hey, look, Ma, I finally made it. When you look stars and I, I forget the name of that goddamn song that WrestleMania used. Uh, um, look, I, I made it. Remember that one? Look, I made it. I made it. No, no one else. Okay. Fine. I don't remember that one. <laughs> it's like all auto tuned to shit. It's, it's got a dumb name. I don't know. <laughs> But he's all like, look at me, I'm on the big screen. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm a beat you up. And Sammy's like, I'm not the moron. And he's like, oh, damn it. How am I going to get you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, that was <laughs> thank you. 
Thank you. So Sammy challenges him to a match. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. At Genesis, the next Impact Plus match. Uh, Impact Plus event. He does. I believe so. Though he never actually says it. He just tells Eddie to take a couple weeks off, which is convenient because Impact is taking a couple weeks off. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it definitely seems to be a Genesis that he was referring to. If only he had said it by name. Well, they announce it at some point in the night because I saw the graphic and, and they build it as or yeah, they it as the last match between the two. And I'm just kind of like, know. what? Like you had I'm... one in three years. You're good. Yeah, no, never. Uh, first of all, never do the last match between the two. And second yeah. of all, definitely don't do it when they haven't really done anything to each other except for a couple weeks of feud on this go around. So. This is not good. This is not good. So, all right, before we go on, I- I'm scrolling through Twitter because AEW is running while we're recording this. And Brock mm. this. And someone knob named Carl at Boston Carl. See, I'm not one of these. If I'm going to roast you, I'm not going to block your name out. You made this a public comment, and I'm going to make you public for being dumb. At Boston Carl, like Boston Market, but only terrible. So it's just like Boston Market. He says at Mad King 1981, for those of you who don't know, that's Eddie Kingston. Quote, man, you aren't very good. Out of shape. Fair. Poor Mike Skills and a Yankees fan. Trilogy of mediocrity. Maybe you should sell hot dogs outside of the stadium at AEW. Eddie Kingston is one of the best talkers in wrestling. Uh Like, there aren't, like... There aren't opinions on things that are a fact. Fact. LeBron James does basketball very good. Opinion. I don't like LeBron James. Those two things can be mutually yeah. exclusive. Like, those two things don't need to be mutually exclusive. Like, like they exist on their own. They Not do. LeBron guy. But he's still very good at that basketball thing. You don't need to like uh-huh. Eddie Kingston. But don't say he's terrible. You, you, one, you're wrong. Two, you're wrong. And three, you're stupidly wrong. Speaking of stupid, Josh Matthews yeah. is up next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's terrible and annoying. <laughs> Facts. Uh, Matthews reveals that the luxury bus of AEW World Champion uh, Kenny Omega has arrived at the Impact Zone again. They are... Uh, they're wasting a lot of money on gas. Uh-huh. And neither man is changing their clothes. That's gross. It's been, it's been two oh, weeks. Gross. Oh, by the by, Eddie, uh, Kenny Omega was on uh, f- uh, d- uh, Final Resolution. Yes, he uh, was backstage. He was so, uh, no, he was or, on the bus. He was so inconsequential, I forgot even what he did. It's like He w- was literally there to... Tell Carl Anderson uh, not to um, not to sell for Ethan Page. Yeah, he told Carl Anderson to bring back the uh, the machine gun. Bring him back. Speaking the G one two thousand twelve finalist is yes. what he keeps saying. Another way of saying that is runner up or loser. Gia Miller interviews the murder surgeon machine guns ahead of Saban's singles match against Carl Anderson. Saban reminds us that the guns still have their rematch clause with the tag team titles. I guess makes sense, but didn't they lose them to the North? I, Zach? I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> Pretty sure they lost them to the North. So how would they have a rematch clause against a different team that they didn't lose them to? I guess I I guess it's just you lost and you challenged the champions because logic. All right, whatever. I guess that's the thing. 
I mean, you didn't need to do that. All you needed to do was say, hey, we beat the North or whatever, and thus we are the number one contenders now. So Saban says there's only room for two machine guns in Impact, and it's not Carl Anderson. (whistles) Fighting words. So that leads us into Kenny Omega and Don Callis antagonizing Carl Anderson, like, get him, Carl, get him, get him, go get him. Now, this is obviously brought about to make the the good brothers heels, which is fine because I hate them already, and that's even when they were trying to be faces. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, no. no. This isn't good. Um, So, Britt Baker, DMD. You know, she's a dentist. Mm Mm-hmm. She clearly has high value in her career because dentists totally don't have the highest rate of, of depression among physicians. Imagine being the face of a division. The first woman signed a role model. <clears throat> she calls herself Michael Jordan. That's dumb. The baddest bitch on the block and a dentist. <laughs> yeah, because we all think you're impressive for it being a dentist. And still not having an action figure. No one actually wants to see you on TV. Shh. But Brian Myers responds to this in the funniest way ever. <clears throat> Brian Myers of Britt Baker, legit biggest travesty in pro wrestling since Mojo Raleigh won the Andre Battle Royal. Oh, Brian Myers with the shots. He got he got shots and he's 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 firing them. He's firing them all over the place. I guess I guess people don't like Mojo Raleigh. Uh, that was unexpected. I, I guess. I mean, I never really cared about him myself, but... I did when he had potential, and he wasn't just being a dude who yells at a mirror. I haven't forgotten about that. That wasn't what he always was. He, uh, he did a thing where he yelled at a mirror. <laughs> Speaking of yelling, Anderson makes his way from his bus, or from the bus, to the uh, the back, and, and Rich Swan finds him, and he's like, what are you doing, bro? Bro, what are you doing? Bro. Bra, 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 bra. And then she's like, <laughs> actually, it's more like Luke Gallows, but he's not here at the moment. Then the machine. Yeah, he had to translate. Yeah, yeah, I had to translate. Then the machine is like, and then Saban gets slapped by Shelly going, stop it. What did I tell you about doing that shit? <laughs> then Saban's like, because he's rubbing his head now. Uh, and Swan's like, "What are you doing, Anderson?" <laughs> and it's like, "I'm, I'm a, I'm a beat their butts." And it's, Swan's like, "Beat their butts? Like, I'll, 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 I i i do not think people say that. I'm gonna smack their butts. No, car is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> you don't beat their butts. <laughs> what are you doing?" So then, you know, they're like, I'm going to beat you up tonight. And Saban's like, do it. Just do it. Just do it. And Swan's like, I don't know who this dude is doing the review of this, but it's fucking terrible. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it sets up the main event that we already had. So like, whatever. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to end the Eddie Callahan feud, even though it's the best feud they have. But the worst feud they have is Moose versus Willie Mack because Mack's been getting his face kicked in for 48 straight weeks. Uh I'm pretty sure if he loses another match in under five minutes to Moose, he's going to tie the record that Nitro had overall. That's how long it's been. (laughs) It's not been good. So they're like, hey, Genesis... How about you and me do the thing that we do so well? And Moose is like, I don't know, Willie Walken. I I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. And then he's like, Ah, never mind. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna beat your face. And then Max like, Better than beat my butt. And Moose is like, Yeah, I feel that. Then people break him up, and someone rips Moose's uh, very poorly made uh, suit because suits don't rip that easily. And then Moose is like, I'm going to beat you up, security guard. Then throws him out. He goes, he goes slap on the ground. And everyone's like, oh, no. Why did the Moose do that to the extra? You can't do that to the extra. We, we need them. They, they don't get paid much. <laughs> so, yeah, Moose and Willie Mack at, at 
Genesis. I don't. I don't Genesis. know. Cho- I don't know what show we're on anymore. There's so many in like the span of three weeks. Uh, so uh, thoughts on Moose versus Mac? Um, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> they they've been doing. Uh, And Willie just gets his ass kicked every single time. So, I mean, we're really just kind of running, running it into the ground. Poor Willie Mac. <sighs> They're doing Willie wrong. Mm-hmm. Then we go backstage and GM Miller asks Moose what happened. He said he's sick of the independent wrestlers who are trying to make a name for themselves by posing as security guards. Moose, stop breaking kayfabe. Right? <laughs> what the fuck? Moose claims that they couldn't even last three minutes in the ring before storming off. I wonder if this is going to have any toll on tonight's show. Nope. <laughs> Bay then approaches Rohit and he's like, ha ha, you lost. And Rohit's like, let's go do the thing against the, the good guys. And they're like, all right, cool. Let's do it. So, so, so we're going to beat them up. And then I'm going to give the belt back to Rohit. Sure, Rohit's dumb enough to believe that. That makes sense. <clears throat> then we go to the following advertisement of All Elite Wrestling. And this is where, jokes aside, I think the show took a fucking hard left. I, I get the whole sh- spiel is like um, Tony Khan and Scott Demore don't like each other and th- their they're rivals roar. They, they did this great thing on Twitter where, like, uh, Demore's like, hey, Tony, I love that you used your fingers to prop up your, your uh, biceps in your little uh, video. And then, like, he, uh, it's, like, flexing with, like, the, the TV title or some bullshit uh, on Twitter to, to Demore. He's like, yeah, I got big guns with the big belt. And then Demore responds with even bigger uh, uh, biceps holding you know, a, a World Series trophy for some reason going, yeah, my title's bigger than yours. And I was like, all right, that's, that's, that's fine. <laughs> But this is where, like, this is just dumb because he's like, I love funding your show. It's just like, all right, whatever. That's fine. But then he goes on to say, like, I, I tried to find out where Access TV is and I couldn't find it because no one wants to watch it. And I'm just like, oh, all right. That's unnecessary. Because, like, like, that just hurts the, the image of Impact. Uh. There's a rule when you're building a fight. Y- y- you don't tear down the other pony, you put yourself over. And if you're really smart, you put yourself over while putting over the other guy. Yeah. But apparently Tony Khan doesn't know shit about anything, which, you know, if you've seen the Jacksonville Jaguars play this year, isn't, you know, isn't completely incorrect. And it just, it buried impact in this feud. And, and I, I didn't understand it. And there was no comeuppance on AEW's portion. Like, no one tagged AEW with anything during commentary. No one tagged anything with him after the show that was of relevance. So, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, if, if, if this is, like, the trade-off for getting Kenny Omega for a pay-per-view main event, I don't want it. I don't want Impact to look yeah. like fucking putzes against AEW. I, I, I don't get it. I don't like it. And I think whoever is, is making these needs to tell Tony Khan, you're not supposed to bury the competition. You're supposed to raise them up. That's the whole way you get dueling fucking uh, companies. It's the way you get, you know, brand warfare. It's the way you get people to tune into both shows. Cause all you're doing is hurting impacts visage and, and, and in turn hurting your own because now impact fans granted, they're not, you know, they're, they're, you know, a half, if that of, of AEW's audience aren't going to be wanting to check out your shit because you're such a tool. And you can only keep debuting new talent for so long before people realize that you don't actually have any storylines worth a damn. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. You putz. All right. Um, then we get uh, Manic versus... Uh, oh, no, we get a, a promo with uh, Cody Diener, Eric Young, and... Uh, da, da, uh, I think this is, like, the prison one. Was that, the, was that, is that what this one is? The prison one? So we start to get like this idea that Cody Dean is going through a gimmick change. And I dig that. And Eric Young is like, I'm a, I'm a turn you into something different. And Cody's like, I'm cool with that. 
I've been lovable, you know, deep North Canadian guy for a long time. So let's 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 see what what we can do. So so that was interesting. Uh, do you think the Cody Deaner gimmick is gonna be interesting after this point? Uh, I really hope so. <laughs> The uh, Cody Deaner gimmick has has been has been fine. It's been enjoyable to it's been enjoyable to watch, but you know a nice little change of pace to get Cody Deaner, you know, to be taken a little seriously. I, I can dig it. I'm gonna go rewatch the Quarantine segments he did. Those were pretty good. Those were. Uh, Chris Bay defeated Manic by DQ after Rohit ran in to try to yank off the mask of uh, Manic. Sorry, what did I say? Rohit yeah. got Chris Bay disqualified when Chris Bay. No, he got no, Manic disqualified. No, he he got Chris Bay disqualified because he. Uh, no, he no got, he did yeah 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 he, you're right you're right you're right you're right he, he punched uh, he punched Bay. Yeah. So. He, he uh, before he punched Bay, Ro, he tried to take the mask off of Manic, and and uh, it was like a, like a cartoon I caught you moment, like he was doing like the big toe step where he's like dun, 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 like, like he only moves when the music's going. So uh-huh. that was that was hilarious. Um, Bay's like, "What are you doing?" And Rohit's just like, "Bam!" And then Bay's like, "I didn't see that coming, but I got disqualified, so I win." And then he's all smiling. I don't know if he was supposed to be smiling, but he was all smiling. Uh, the, 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 uh, they were putting it over that this was Bay's plan all along so that he gets the win over Manic and thus gets a future X, future X Division title shot. Which is going to upset some folks in the Rohit uh, uh, chat room because that means Rohit's not getting his belt back. Ro- Rohit's got a chat room? <laughs> oh, of course he does. <laughs> It's RohitChats.org. It's very educational. You can learn all 72 facts about Rohit Raju. So after Ethan Bates lost to Carl Anderson, the North were eliminated from future tag team title shot considerations, which I guess that was never specified, but sure. Uh, Alexander tells him that the North can't be together right now. He's angry. He's sad. He's upset. Paige responds by saying that we will always have your back. And I, and I, honest to God, I, 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 I thought he was being serious that there was a third member of the North. I was like, all right, cool. You're going to bring in a, a dude to replace you. That's cool. I'm down. I wonder who it's going to be. Then Brian Myers oh. walks up. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I bought into it. Brian Myers walks up and goes, hey, I'll be your tag team partner. And <laughs> Josh's like, I don't want a team with you. I want to hurt you. And Brian's like, damn it. Although it would have been Why even does everyone say that to me. It would have been even better if you walked him like, I'll be your partner, and Josh just went, God damn it, Heath, I don't need this right now. And just left. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get Kenny Omega uh, back on the bus talking about he's angry at Rich Swan for disrespecting him and Carl Anderson earlier tonight. Omega apologized to Don for what he's about to do. Then we go to the f- First match of the semifinals of the tag team knockouts tournament. Most of that is right. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was all. I think all of that was right, just in a very odd order. Yes. It, well, no. Um, every it was right until I got to the ta- the knockouts tag team title because I, I said the tag team knockouts tournament. Yeah. Technically, it's it's a it's a knockout tournament, yes, but it's technically the knockouts tag team title tournament. So, like, all right, whatever. So, Rosemary and Taya versus uh, Tosh Steels and Kira Hogan. Um, have I ever mentioned before that I love Taya's uh, attire? <laughs> it's just there's just two reasons why, and I can't quite put my fingers on it because of restraining order reasons. <laughs> but don't. Ty is like, all right, so I've been following Ty's career for six years, six years, seven years. Back when she was the reign of the reignish champion down in AAA. And she was like skinny mini, man. She, like hardcore 12-pack abs, but like vastly different looking. And now she doesn't have the abs anymore, but she's become a bit of a power lifter. So she has a different frame, different physique, and different everything. But it it's... 
it's been a world of difference for her in terms of her uh, uh, her abilities in the ring. Like she used to be a, a high flyer, although a mediocre one at that, and now she's very much like a power wrestler, and it works. Uh, uh-huh. The uh, the oh, oh so cute tag team with Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Like they just like they're adorable and like they come out and they're trying to be so hard, but they're like four foot nine. Alicia Edwards towers over them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, you're so adorable. Uh, this is a solid little match. Uh, you know, Tasha and Kira used their speed. Uh, Rosemary and, and Taya used their their size advantage and their their length advantage. And you know, sh- shocker of shockers, that you know, Diana comes out and she's the big match, so she attacks Rosemary. And, like, I really liked what happened when she starts attacking Rosemary. Like, Taya starts to, like, kind of lose her shit. And she's like, you know, you leave her alone. Stop doing that. You know, stop it. And she's yelling at him. And then I think it was Tasha Steeles ends up taking advantage. I think rolls her up. No, Uh, I think it was Kira. Hits her her with the uh, super kick. Yeah, it's a super kick into a neck breaker. Yeah. Kira has a, a, like, I, I don't know if it's technically a neck breaker or what, but it's, like, really fucking cool. Like she does like a little flippity mm-hmm. doodah over it, and you're like, "Yeah, it's so cool." So Kira and Tasha Steele are the first team to advance to the finals. So that means that we got Jazz and Jordan versus Navia and Havoc. And let's be honest, it's not going to be Navia and Havoc. So, are you excited yeah. about a Jazz Jordan Kira uh, um, Tasha finals? Yeah, I could dig it. I honestly, I had a feeling that this was going to be the case. I, you know, p- bringing Jazz in make it definitely makes you want to say that Jordan and Jazz are going to win. But I think it's. I think this is Kira and Tasha's. They've been a really. I mean, they've built up this tag team for basically the entire year. Mm-hmm. So I think. I I think having them win the the tag titles in their first in the championship's first return I I think it makes sense. You know I'm I'm very much on 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 point with that as well. They are the longest formed tag team to my knowledge. Um, I mean Rosemary and Ty technically got together maybe March or so, but. They were still doing the 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 heel kind of thing, mm-hmm. <clears throat> or she, or I should say, uh, Ty was still doing the heel ty- kind of thing. Um, but yeah. w- what I'd like to see is whoever wins that the feud go on beyond the finals, because I think you got uh-huh. like two good months at least running it back. <clears throat> the other reason I'm not sure about Tasha and and Kira though, I should say the only reason is like getting Jazz back was such a get. You know, yes, it, it would seem almost anticlimactic that you would bring in one of the five best female wrestlers of the last 25 years only to have her lose. Like it's Gail Kim, Trish Stratish, her, you know, it's so like, I don't know why you would bring back someone like Jazz and not pull the trigger with that, so to speak. It's so like yeah. I, I, I'm confused. I'm conflicted. But like Tasha and Kira are like totally you know, viable options, especially as, as a, as a character standpoint, they're riveting. Uh-huh. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, we then got another part of the Eddie, uh, Eric Young, Cody Diener segment. Uh, then we move backstage and Tosh Steeles uh, is going to award the role cash or Hernandez and mysteriously disappeared for a fanny fact moments later. Tasha tells Kira that it wasn't part of the, her plan and that the money is truly gone. Johnny Swinger stumbles upon uh, the funny pack and finds the money hidden in a compartment. Tasha was pulling a fast one all along. Oh, man. Oh, no. That does not bode well for the future of this tag team. Speaking of bolding well for the future of the tag team, Josh Alexander versus Brian Myers ends in chaos when uh, Ethan Page gets knocked out and then reappears as the karate man. Costing Josh the match. Oh, no. DQ. J- like, seriously, Ethan Page stood in the ring for, like, a good 45 seconds after everyone left. Just standing there like, ah. Thoughts on his kicks? Because he did a bunch of kicks, too. 
He did. He did a bunch of kicks. He he did his Karate Man stuff. Um. You don't seem too uh, sold on his kicks. I mean, I mean, the kicks were decent. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take anything away from his kicks. I, I am gonna take away everything. Understand this mentality of Ethan Page is. Mm, Possibly looking to go elsewhere. So let's take a joke out before he leaves. I'm uh, I'm going to disagree with you. <clears throat> His kicks are shit. <laughs> they are. They're trash. <clears throat> I want you to look up a guy by the name of Sage Northcutt. Or even uh, mm. Luke Rockhold. And I want you to see how they deliver their kicks. And then watch this again. Like, this was him watching how people do kicks on YouTube and then doing them. If he's going to tell me that he's actually a black belt in karate, I'm going to say that his black belt is bullshit because he's got no form. Just terrible form. Um, But I, I, I agree with you. The let's go gimmicky on the loss kind of nonsense is weird. But I also need to point out that the actual angle is him going crazy, which we already saw kind of elements of when they lost the title the first time where Ethan mm. started to kind of lose his composure. And, and this is kind of the end game of that. So I get it, but the karate man gimmick is so absurd that it, that it kind of negates like what they're going for. Well, you know, we'll see what happens um, come, you know, January when they're back on TV so, you know, yeah. I mean, they might advance some storylines uh, on the next two shows for all we know. But, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So with that being said, uh, we moved on to. Um, uh, did, did, I, did I skip that segment? I, I don't think I saw the uh, Cody Diener getting baptized. I mean, it was it was just the end of the. It was was, was the that the one where he threw his hat the, away? It was the last little bit of the prison segment, and it's literally just a shot of him as water's like a close-up shot of his face mm, as okay. water is being poured on his head. Okay, I have I did see that. <clears throat> we then get a weird kind of double segment. Larry D shows up. No, I'm sorry. AC Romero shows up. He's like, Larry D was framed, and Tommy's like, prove it, then, bitch. And then he's yeah. like, all right. And then Tommy walks down the hall and he's like, hey, cousin Jake and Rhino, what are you two doing? And they're like, Eric Young and Joe Doring took Cody Diener from cousin Jake and we're sad. And Tommy's like, we don't get sad in wrestling. We get violent. And they're like, yeah, Tommy, that's a great idea. So they're clearly building up to a six-man tag. And I'm fine with it, especially if it's super violent. I say Barbed Wire Master 4. This seems like an appropriate measure. <laughs> Cody Diener throws his hat away. The Barbed Wire Massacre 4. <laughs> seems like an overreaction. I, I mean, I understand. I get it. Like, I'm on board with, with the absurdity, and I'm fine with it. Zach, are you down for Barbed Wire Massacre 4 with uh, Cody Diener and Jake something? <laughs> uh, I'm down. <laughs> I said do it. Don't be cowards, you cowards. Uh, we then get hyping up for next week's, then the main event. Carl Anderson defeats uh, uh, defeats Chris, Chris Saban, Saban with the roll. Yeah, it says Carl Anderson versus Chris Saban for the result, and I'm like, that, that doesn't make any fucking sense. So, like, uh, yeah, uh, he kind of like conned his way to a win. Yep. So, there's that. Uh, we then have a uh, post-match. Uh, Swan and, and Carl are yelling at each other, and Swan's like, hey, why are you leaving? This isn't cool. Don't hang out with Kenny Omega and, and Don Callis. They'll make you do the weed. <laughs> <laughs> They're bad influences on you. They're going to get you to skip sixth period, which is study hall, a time for you to learn. 
And then all of a sudden, Doc Gal is like, oh, what's up? And then starts beating people up. And the machine guns come up. And they start getting beat up. And they're beating people up. And everyone's beating each other up. And it's a Downy Brook. It's a brouhaha. It's, it's, it's a calamity. It's a flim flam. It, it's, it's an event of the ages. And then all of a sudden, Kenny Omega shows up and starts beating people down. And then it's like, hey, we're, we're, we're going to do something called Reuniting Bullet Club at, at Hard to Kill. It's a pay-per-view in January. Tune in. And Don Cal's like, I'm a boss here. I can make that happen. So, so that's that's what we're doing. And I'm just sitting here going, you know, this might be the dumbest way to ever do this, but I'm so already ordered that pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts on the um, the the big time brouhaha that we're gonna be getting at hard to kill main event. You know, I I can dig it. Um. I I will I am gonna call out impact on one thing that it was during the main event it was during Carl Anderson versus Chris Saban uh, they did like a picture in picture of uh, Kenny Omega and Don Callis in the bus and Josh was like oh Kenny Omega and Don Callis are watching this match very closely and it was literally just them replaying a shot from earlier in the show. Yep. Just without audio. So I got I got I got called bullshit on that one, guys. That's that's pretty weak sauce. <laughs> either I, I either have a clip of them just watching the match or don't do that at all. But the the announcement, the the main event of Hard to Kill being announced, I can dig it. I, I'm I'm on board. I, I mean, it was pretty clear when um, last week when Rich Swan was snubbed from getting on from getting past the uh, he didn't make the list apparently that they were gonna build up to something like this. Um, besides Don Callis, has there been anything of any impact? people showing up on AEW? Not right now that I can see. So we'll yeah. have to continue to keep an eye on that. Okay. So, yeah. So, so yeah, that should be fun. Um, it did get me thinking. I have been thinking about it. Um, Rich Swan. Rich Swan is a, is a solid wrestler. But, it, but to have this kind of inner brand promotion thing going on i don't know that he's the guy to be helping out to being the ambassador so to speak between the two brands for Mm -hmm. impact on the impact side um i mean the obvious easy choice for that would have been eddie edwards yep so uh sammy callahan would also be a good choice to have pop in on AEW just just have a segment of Sammy Callahan running into John Moxley backstage would be pretty solid. You know, I'm hoping we get that. I'm I'm hoping mm. there there is a crossover event. You know, even if it's on AEW's time, because like yeah. some of that would be great. Like especially Moxley and Callahan just kind of staring at each other. Like they 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 just like walk by each other and, and like they don't say anything, but. You know, maybe one's got, like, barbed wire around his hand. The other one's got, like, a tack in his head. And they're just staring at each other before walking away. Like, that would be awesome. <laughs> like, it, it would be, mm-hmm. the, it would be the, the most perfect way of doing it. Um, but, you know, as, as far as this specific goes, this specific show goes, you know, I think it was a solid follow-up to uh, Final Resolution. Um, I still think they got a long way to go with Rich Swan as world champion. But I, I, it's not like they're not making strides. I, I don't. You know, I, I'm someone who, who who feels the need to be as belligerently honest as possible. But I don't ever want to seem like I'm not acknowledging that there is strength, strides being made. Swan is really starting to show his personality, like with the segments with Eddie Edwards where they're singing, you know, We Are the Fire or whatever the song's called. You know, his stuff with the machine yeah. guns, his stuff with Mac. They're giving him time. Maybe he's not the right guy, in my opinion, because if you wanted to make a new star, Mac, I think, is the more charismatic individual, and he's the guy that you had on roster who could slide into those type of conversations. 
Um, but I've also noticed that Mac has slowed down some in recent years compared to where he was four or five years ago. So maybe Impact knows that and, and they don't want to push him too hard because, you know, they're building up to a match with Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega likes to be bit best bout machine, go long minutes. And if you're Impact, you just found the three best guys to match with Impact with uh, uh, Omega who aren't Eddie Edwards, and that's Chris Saban, Alex Shelley, and Rich Swan. So, uh-huh. they're, you know, they're making some smart deso- decisions. Um, personally, though, I, uh, uh, I think the decision to go with Swan over Eddie makes sense in one regard. I love Eddie. He might be a top five worker in the world. Dude is cardboard cracker on the mic. He has no flavor. No, he absolutely does not. He, he is rice cake minus the flavor sauce. He is water but boring. His wife, who isn't a great talker, has a big old personality. Uh-huh. But Eddie, big dude, little personality. He, he, and he's, he seems like a quiet guy. He seems like a very reserved guy in real life. He seems like someone who, who, who's very soft-spoken and, and, like, probably laughs when he sees someone get kicked in the dick or, like, laughs when, yeah. when, when somebody talks about, like, man, remember in Home Alone when that dude got fucking hit in the nards and Eddie just goes, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's who I imagine Eddie Edwards is. And, like, he only does that when he's slightly drunk because otherwise he probably doesn't smile or laugh at all. In fact, that could be a great gimmick where Eddie just doesn't have any emotions and he just rips through people. But, God, why book, why book Eddie to be uh, some kind of violent bastard? No one would buy that. Uh, but Swan, you know, he's got the, the, the chemistry and the personality to go head-to-head with Kenny Omega, and I think it's going to help elevate Swan to a different level. At least that's the theory. That's the hope. We'll see how it play, plays out. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss the North as a tag team if Ethan does sign elsewhere. And he says that, you know, and that he hasn't said. He said that he's, uh, he, he may have had his last match in Impact, but the word around town is that AEW and WB and MLW have reached out to him about a new deal. And I'm sure Impact has given him a new deal as well. So it's going to be, you know, where does Ethan want to go? And frankly, I, I get going for the money, and I don't ever want to be like that guy who's like, oh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got a family to support. I think he's married, and he's got a very violent uh, action figure collection that probably is not cheap to, to maintain. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure he wants to send his daughter to college and make sure he's got money for his wife and all that while still buying his toys. So like, I, that's all going to be kind of part of, I guess, his rationale for where he goes and why he goes. But I got to you know think to myself, he's not going to get – this kind type of creative freedom in, in WWE. He's not going to get this type of creative freedom in, you know, uh, AEW, maybe in Ring of Honor, maybe in MLW, but I don't think they're offering more money than, than Impact is, so I don't know. Maybe we'll see Ethan Page in 2021 in Impact. Maybe we won't. Maybe we will, yeah. but it's already pre-taped stuff. Who knows? <laughs> uh, and then lastly, uh, I, I don't think there's any other news out there, but uh, the news that came out last night was Jake Crist is officially a free agent now. Mm. Which, I mean, we kind of saw coming. His brother tanked his brother's career. Dave tanked Jake's career uh, with, the, yeah. with the allegations against him. So, like, I, I didn't think Jake would ever come back, which kind of sucks because Jake was always the better of the two. Uh, far more interesting. Granted, Dave did have that great fucking reaction to Pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, but he seems to be done. We haven't seen Sawyer Fulton in like a month. Nope. And Sawyer Fulton was part of that group. Then we have, you know, Havoc and Avia and Sammy Callahan. They're still there. So I don't know what's going to happen with those three. I, I would, you know, I would. I would hate to think that Sammy Callahan's going to get caught up in this. He's re- basically one of their only big draws. You know, so I, w- mm-hmm. I, would, I would hope nothing would happen with that. But then again, Sammy has his own baggage that, that have been rumored about for years, so who knows? Who fucking knows anymore? Impact turns over talent so fast you'd think they're a porn agency. <laughs> like, God yeah. damn, shelf life on these guys. So... We'll see what happens. Any final thoughts on this week's show? No, I believe we've covered everything. All right. Then for Zachary Todd, if you're not going to, 
I'm Chad Portal. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. You can find Zachary on Instagram and DeviantArt at Radiance2020, R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E-2020. You can, you, also find, you can also find us on, uh, find me on Twitter at uh, Chad Nerdcorp, C-H-A-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P, and on the Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. The website's realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com, and on the Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. This is our last show until the New Year's Eve special, so we're going to be off for technically two weeks. We'll be back on the 31st in some form or fashion right here on, uh, uh, maybe we'll do it on the Nerd Corp side of things. No, we might have to switch. Uh, well, I'll figure it out later. For Zach, I'm Chad. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. And as always, watch more wrestling. Thackeray, take us home. Good night, Ethan Page. <laughs>